match for tonight's matchup at the high school women's level with DME hosting Potter's House Christian out of Jacksonville, Florida. The Lions in town wearing the road blacks. DME with the basketball first in the home whites with two 18-minute halves. Thanks for coming along here on the live stream. Luke Morrow with you alongside Dan Panaggio. And on the opening possession, essentially a shot clock violation for DME with Mary McMillan airballing the three at the horn. Well, Luke, it's uh, it's good to reunite with you here. Like It's like old times. Yeah, working together here on air for the first time in a few years with a good matchup in front of us. Potter's House Christian with their first offensive possession. The kick out for the three from Victoria Smalls grazing the rim and the rebound pulled in by Rayner. Rayner with 17 rebounds the first time these two teams matched up. That was almost two months ago, a win here for DME by six. And Rayner on the offensive end gets the first points with the help of the glass. Great ball movement there, Luke, from one side to the other. Led to the bucket, the early lead for DME, and now a travel on the other end. Extra steps from Jasmine Gaines turns it over for the Lions. Tyler did a nice job there of holding her ground and uh, protecting the rim. Forcing the turnover, DME gets the ball back with the early 2-0 lead. McMillan will walk it up. Sophomore guard out of Popka, Florida, not too far from here. Runs the offense for the squad and getting it inside to Keani Moore for the bucket. A early 4-0 lead and just as quickly a 30-second timeout taken by head coach Tony Bannister and the Lions as DME jumps out with some more energy than the Lions take an early 4-0 lead here almost uh, about 90 seconds in. I like the start that the uh, the DME team has got, uh, and I thought Keani did a nice job there of up faking, hard drive on the baseline, and a good finish. Moore, a junior from Claremont, Florida, averages a double-double, more than 11 points a game, 11 rebounds at 5-10 for this DME team. A DME squad that has seven players dressed per game, so they ask... A lot from there, uh, certainly the starting five, but all seven suited up. And Keani Moore, Mary McMillan, too, that we've touched on already in the early going. Excellent players here for DME. Good ball club uh, and a young ball club that will only get better with time. DME 12 and 10 on the year, entering tonight 3 and 1 in conference play. And more importantly, maybe 4 and 1 here at home on their home floor. Out of the timeout. 4-0 lead for DME and a stop on the defensive end. I think it was Moore who got the block, but followed by a turnover. A little bit of carelessness there on that outlet pass uh, um, by DME. So getting it right back are the Lions. Inbounding in their half court. Driving from the foul line and traveling with Sierra Swanda. So a couple of travels for the Lions early on. They still are without a field goal. Nice job again, protecting the rim uh, this time by Keani Moore. So good interior defense from DME to begin. And on the other side, Potter's House looking to double McMillan out by midcourt. Rayner, shot off the back iron, popped out. Moore there for the rebound. Now the pull up from Duckett, and that's too strong. Trying to push it up the floor is Gaines. Finds Williams, driving the lane. The runner banked too hard, rimmed out. And the rebound goes back to DME. The Lions still scoreless. DME looking for a good possession here. They've come up empty the last couple times down the floor. Need a bucket here. They have the 4-0 lead as McMillan gives into the corner. Open three is knocked down by Tyler Happer. Penetrating kick there by Mary McMillan, and uh, Tyler knocks down that three-point shot. Happer leads the team in three-point percentage, up around 33% now on the year. That was her 27th make, and it gives DME the 7-0 lead. The runner in the lane was short from Mariah Lane, fittingly enough, and on the other end, McMillan on the leak out, the wide open lane. Very poor transition defense. Um, by the Lions on that possession there. They're gonna have to uh, watch themselves. They could get blown out here. Now already a 9-0 start for DME here at home against Potter's House out of Jacksonville. The Lions 13-9 on the year. Two and two in the conference, which places them third. But after a 5-0 start and an eight and two start for Potter's House, they have only won five of their last uh, 12 games and trailing right now 9-0. Yeah, I'd say they need a bucket here, Luke. Uh, 
what do they got? About five minutes and 15 seconds gone, and uh, they're scoreless. Off the inbounds pass, they get it in the lane, and the shot off the glass. Good for Mariah Lane. There is that first bucket. So a 9-2 lead for DME as the Lions eventually get on the board nearly four minutes in. Rayner in the short corner has to kick it up top to duck it. Back to Hapler in that corner. And Happer couldn't hit the three this time, but she's able to tip the rebound out to McMillan. Moore with the turnaround, buries it. Oh, DB is playing some great team basketball, and that ball movement led to that offensive rebound and uh, eventually the bucket. On the other side, Potter's House really struggling on this end of the floor as Hayden has to kick it to the corner, and there's another bucket for the Lions and the made jumper by Swanda. And then I believe maybe a warning issue to the, be the bench of Potter's House after the basket. Yeah, they're probably none too happy with the, the start they're getting here. Coach Bannister in his 11th year at Potter's House. He's seen better starts than this one as the three is off the mark for Duckett. Off to the races, unable to finish the lay-in was Gaines. And pulling the rebound away is Duckett. There's McMillan into the front court for DME. Happer back in her corner. Gives up top, Duckett, who will reset. Back to McMillan, shot clock to single digits. Gets into the lane, the kick out, here's Rayner. Never got it to the rim, shot clock expires. That's twice now for DME here in the first five minutes that that has occurred. The one thing that DME uh, does very well is get out and run the fast break. They really haven't had much transition um, so far in this ball game. They have the seven point lead, five minutes in. Walking it up is Penn. And Penn getting all the way to the rim, draws our first foul of the game. That will lead to our first free throws. So Caitlin Penn will shoot two. I think Potter House is better than they've shown here in the first uh, seven minutes of the ball game. So I expect uh, a really a tight ball game, and I expect that they'll probably get something going here before too long. They've spotted DME the early lead as Penn leaves the first free throw short. DME scoring the first nine points of the game. Penn quick with her free throw attempts, misses both, but the rebound was pulled in by a lion who stepped on the baseline for the turnover. Coach uh, Mike Panaggio not too happy with the uh, rebounding of the box out on that free throw attempt. Coach Panaggio in his first year here running this team has them off to a 12 and 10 start and a seven point lead tonight. As Rayner is too strong with the jumper from the black, Moore rips away the rebound and gets the put back off the glass. Wow, she snuck that one up between two, uh, two Potter's House players. Uh, good, good finish there by Kiki. Shooting better than 50% from the floor this year, averaging a double-double. Very talented inside for DME. As the runner on the baseline was no good for Penn, Rayner has the rebound. There's Happer in transition, firing into Moore. The kick out, open three for Duckett, rims out. And the rebound will go out of bounds off of Happer, back over to Potter's house. Lexi's had uh, some tough luck uh, in the early going. She's been open on those threes, uh, and that ball's just rimmed out on her three consecutive times. She's the team's leading scorer, averaging more than 14. So when you have your leading scorer off to a slow night as a coach, do you encourage her to keep on shooting? Oh, yeah, she's got to keep taking those shots and uh, don't even think about it because they're all good good attempts, and they resulted from good ball movement. And eventually, I um, imagine they'll start falling for her as Cantone misses the jumper. McMillan with the no-look pass into the corner to Happer, who drew the foul, and DME will inbound. I really like the way uh, DME is moving the ball and sharing it with, uh, with their teammates. McMillan, just a sophomore, runs the offense, but she plays with a lot more experience than that. Unable to get it in is DME. Five-second violation, or do they get the timeout first? Timeout taken, it appears, by DME before the violation. Well, pretty good call by Coach Panaggio because that referee was just about to lay on that whistle and call the five-second count. 
So Coach Panaggio saving his team a turnover with the timeout coming just before the violation and McMillan breaking free a little bit too late on the inbounds. DME with the basketball leading 13-4 nearly midway through this first half. And a good start for DME, as you mentioned, impressed with the ball movement and the uh, efficiency on the offensive end. Yes, I, I think they're, they're really, they've come out ready to play. Uh, not everything's going perfectly for them. Uh, Lexi hasn't hit her, her jumpers, her open jumpers. But uh, other than that, uh, I like the way they're starting the ball game. Defense has been pretty good. Out of the timeout, a second try for DME on this baseline inbounds. Duck it with the honors once more, and this time able to get it in without so much drama, finding McMillan up top. Duck it off the screen, pull up jumper inside. The arc got blocked out of bounds. Yeah, I think uh, Lexi had a baseline drive there. She probably could have got all the way to the bucket. Settled for the pull up. That was rejected by Kyra Williams, and DME will inbound once more. Millen will run the offense. Here comes a double team, and she'll airmail it out of bounds. Yeah, uh, they lost their offensive balance there, and uh, that caused trouble uh, on the double team. DME had 29 turnovers the first time these two teams met almost two months ago, but still found a way to win that one back on December 12th, 76-71 against these Lions. So second matchup this year, and so far an early 9-0 lead for the home team. I don't know how many turnovers they do have already today, but that may be their first. Yeah, certainly we'll hope to avoid a repeat of those 29. There's Duckett on the fast break all alone to the hoop. And she gets the layup to fall. Well, she has, she struggled a little bit down the floor on that uh, fast break there, Luke, but she gained uh, body control at the very end. So Duckett gets on the board and wave off the basket on the other end. Kyra Williams with steps before the bank shot. Good looking athlete there, Kyra Williams. I, I think she's a pretty good, pretty solid player there. Saw a block on the defensive end for her, but no good on the basket there with the travel. A 6-1 forward for this Potter's House Christian team. One of the captains, a junior for Coach Tony Bannister. We got a tee, Luke. Now, was that on Coach Bannister? He's been very vocal all game to this point. And a tad unprofessional. And he still wants uh, some words with the officials. Bannister's been the head coach here at Potter's House since 2007. Uh, not only frustrated tonight, but maybe frustrated throughout this season. He's not used to all these losses. The Lions entered tonight at 13-9. For Bannister, when he started out as the head coach for the Lions, they won 138 of his first 151 games. Well, right now, um, I would not afford him this opportunity to chew my ear off if I'm one of those officials. Uh, he just got teed up, as far as I know, and now uh, he's called timeout and he's chewing off the ref some more. So this is unprofessional. I wouldn't put up with it. I'm sure if you were a coach, you... Probably wish you had the same patience from some officials out there. I never was uh, seemed to get those breaks in, in my day, uh, Luke. I don't know. Maybe this. Maybe it's just a different time. So still a delay here, and what essentially turns into a timeout for the two teams. And when we get back to action, I believe we'll have the technical free throws for DME as they lead 15-4, almost midway through this first half. And as mentioned, Bannister only lost 13 of his first 151 games with this program, but in danger of his 10th loss already this year with the Lions in just the first 23 games. So not the usual success Potter's House is used to. As the first free throw good for Tyla Happer. No surprise, she gets the opportunity for the technical free throw. She leads the team in this category, shooting better than 80% from the line, and she makes both. Tyler's really grown up since she's gotten here to DME, and I think she's an excellent college prospect. I think she's a Division I pro prospect, uh, Luke. One of three players on this team averaging double digits, 10 points per game for the senior originally from Virginia. As the runner good for Duckett, and she starts to warm up. That's what she does so well is that pull-up jump shot off the dribble. There's a carry there, Luke. Mm -hmm. 
And instead turns it into a turnover anyways. Ball don't lie. <laughs> Apper from the corner knocks it down again. Well, if the coach uh, from the Potter House thought that technical was going to turn momentum around, I think he's mistaken. It's almost on the opposite. Yeah. There's a runner in the lane. No good from Lane. DME with an 18-point lead, eight minutes in. Good ball movement leads to the open look, and Canto knocks it through. Great job uh, by uh, Cantone to hit that jump shot. She nearly had a triple-double in the first matchup between these two, and there's another steal for Duckett. Trouble in the transition, and she's fouled on the layup try. <laughs> Late call by the official, but an obvious call. Lexi's struggling a little bit tonight, but uh, she'll find a way to catch her rhythm. Almost moving too quickly for herself in transition. Maybe a little bit nervous as well as the free throw is good. Tough as she's had for a start, I think that's her fifth point. She's mm -hmm. looking for her sixth there in just 10 minutes of play. Averaging better than 14 a game to lead the team as the second rims in and out. DME with a 21-point lead, and there is a foul call against DME under the basket that will lead to free throws. And so Kyra Williams will head to the line. And the lefty will shoot a pair. Nice shooting touch. How tall the, uh, would you say she is, Luke? Well, the roster had her listed. I could find it. At 6-1, so I'm going to say 6-1. Yeah, she's every bit of that. Yeah. Nice looking player. One of the tallest players on the floor. And she cuts the deficit to 19 for Potter's House. Moore, kick out to Duckett. Happer in that corner, another three. And the Lions get bit once more. Yeah. Tyler's got it going over on that left side of the floor, Luke. They've forgotten all about her in the corner. She's made three of those from beyond the arc. And a steal now for Happer on the defensive end. She runs the break, bouncing up to Duckett, who lays it in. It's a 24-point lead. Textbook fast break. Nice job by Tyler to stop at the free throw line and make that uh, assist to Lexi. DME with a couple of steals already tonight, leading to fast break layups. Here's a block for Moore. She couldn't save it on the baseline. You know, she doesn't look, uh, Kiki does not look like she's that big. I probably guess she's 5'11", uh, but she's got very long arms and is able to do a lot of shot blocking for this club. I believe that's already her second block tonight. Has 42 of them this year. Obviously tops on the team. And a foul with a bump on the sideline there called against Duckett. It's only three fouls aside, so Potter's House will inbound. They get it in the hands of Gaines, and Gaines fouled. Happer thought she had a clean block. Instead, free throws upcoming for Gaines. That's going to be on Lexi. Yeah, so Happer may have had the clean block, but Duckett picks up the foul. Is It's at least number two. Uh, is that number three, Luke? It's a good question. Free throw is up and in. She's staying in there for the time being. Well, they got a light bench over there. They've mm -hmm. only got a couple of subs. Two options for Coach Panaggio on his bench, per usual for DME tonight. They lead by 22. Three-pointer no good for Happer on the other end of the floor this time. A little bit quick on that uh, trigger that time by Tyler. She must, it must be a heat check. And a steal for McMillan. She's already had a couple of those tonight. There's Happer back to her left corner and back to the success. She likes that spot, Luke. Four threes from that one corner for Happer tonight, who now has 30 triples on the year, and it's followed by another turnover from the Lions. Yeah, Mary McMillan may have gotten away with a hack there on that drive. 
Helps lead to a turnover instead, and with less than eight minutes to play in the first half, it's all DME here tonight. They lead 33 to eight. Happer at more three-pointers from the left corner than Potter's House has field goals from anywhere on the floor. Cantone splits a double team. The one-hand floater was too strong. And the rebound secured from the floor by Sierra Swanda. Three-pointer from the top of the key. Off the mark for Swanda. And McMillan, the smallest player out there, tracking down the rebound. And the outlet pass trickled out of bounds. She threw it away on her own. It's going to go back to the Lions. Yeah, she struggled to get that outlet pass out there. Uh, DME has not uh, got the fast break going like uh, I've seen them have in the past. The girls aren't uh, really reacting to a change in possessions. Rayner comes back in for DME. Duckett checks out. And a foul called inside that will send Mariah Lane to the stripe. So two more free throws for the Lions. Well, she got a very uh, fortunate bounce on that one. The majority of the Lions points have come here from the charity stripe as Lane gets a pair. And Potter's House finally getting into double figures. They're trailing 33 to 10, seven minutes to go first half. Trying to make a game of it. Rayner. Pull-up jumper against a double team. That was no good. Not a good shot, Luke. That's not her, uh, that's not her game right there. First offensive possession for Rayner since coming back in. The shot forced, and Happer with a block. Her seventh of the year for DME. Cantone couldn't finish the lay-in in transition. Fouled on the take to the hoop was Swanda. She'll shoot a pair of free throws. Missing the first. And the ball getting away from the officials, causing a slight delay. 6.37 to go first half. And it's a 33-10 lead for DME. Missed them both, but the rebound, put back try off the glass, was too strong for Lane. Gets it again. And there's the basket on a lengthy possession for Potter's House after a few missed opportunities. Yeah, not a good possession defensively for the DME team. Moore inside, finishes in traffic. That's what she does, Luke. She's a finisher. Happer with the deflection on the defensive end, still able to secure it was Davis. DME's got to make them uh, earn their baskets on field goals. They continually are putting them at the line here. Now, even though it's a 35 to 12 game, heck, it's a, it'd be interesting to see if they could uh, keep their hands to themselves what, what the score would look like. Seven fouls on DME, just three against Potter's House. DME with only two free throws. Potter's House, I imagine at this point, into double figures in their attempts. Marissa Rulbach uh, checks into the game for DME. First time we see her tonight, which now makes everybody for DME getting into the game. DME, yeah, DME's got to do a better job of uh, blocking out and going after that ball on these free throws. And Potter's House getting it back off the miss. Smalls receives the inbounds. Smalls for a three-pointer from NBA range. That's airballed out of bounds. NBA range, maybe even two steps behind. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she throws up the air ball. A little bit out of her range, Luke. So many three-point lines on the floor these days that players oftentimes could get confused or courageous. Didn't work out for Smalls. On the other end, here's a three-pointer. That was in and out for Roback. Rebounded by the Lions. 
Smalls couldn't handle the pass, stolen away by McMillan. McMillan in transition to her own back, and she lays it in for her first basket. Beautiful fast break and a great pass and great uh, uh, fast break uh, orchestrating by Mary McMillan. Oh, there's a travel. The bank shot way too strong off the window for Lane. Ball loose on the floor. It's secured by the Lions. Smalls gets it back. Three-pointer air ball from the corner into the hands of McMillan after the miss from Lane. McMillan, kick back to Cantone. Couldn't finish the pull-up in the lane. Back and forth we go with DME leading by 24, less than five to play in the opening half. Smalls with the hands off, giving it to Davis. Davis with a nice take to the hoop, but couldn't finish. McMillan to Cantone. Here's Moore at the foul line. Turnaround jumper rattles in. Steady as she goes, Kiki Moore. And a timeout taken once more by Tony Bannister after DME pushes its lead to 26, up 39-13 with 4.09 to go in the first half. And a 5'10", Kiana Moore has shown that soft touch and rain a couple, range a couple times, knocking down a few of those foul line jumpers. So she can step out and stick it a little bit, play inside as well, does a great job on the glass. Kiana Moore does a little bit of everything. She does, and she's got such a good demeanor. She's such a good team player. I think she's got a bright future uh, in college basketball. She's just a junior, so mm -hmm. she has plenty of time to, uh, to develop. Her and her teammates out to a 26-point lead tonight, 39-13 over Potter's House out of Jacksonville, who's in town here in Daytona and trying to avoid what would be their third loss in the conference after an excellent start here on this 2017-2018 season. Yeah, I think, they're, I think they're a good ball club. It's just they ran into a buzzsaw tonight. Mm -hmm. DME's got everything going uh, right. And I really like this DME uh, ladies team. They're very, very young. I think they've just got one senior on the ball club, and that's Tyler. Yeah, that's correct. Three sophomores, actually four sophomores. Two juniors, one senior for DME. A win tonight would push them three games over 500 on the year. Jumper no good for Davis. Rebound tip to her and a foul call as she got knocked to the floor. Well, the one bugaboo has been uh, rebounding the defensive glass here for DME. Davis hurt, still slow to get up. In fact, still down on her knees. It looks like she may have got hit in the face uh, on that uh, rebound attempt. Well, if she will be okay to continue, it will be a one-on-one -one try for Davis. But looks like she may have to come out for at least a moment. Yeah, she's shaken up as much as anything. And, of course, uh, now with the uh, concussion mm -hmm. protocols, uh, Luke, it looks like she did get hit in the face. And uh, it may have rattled her, her brain there a little bit. So hopefully Davis is okay. The freshman has to check out where she'll be checked out by the medical staff. And, of course, that's one thing that DME has going for it, an excellent medical staff. We've got three certified athletic trainers here, and um, Angie Lawrence heads that department, and I'm sure she's taking a look at uh, the patient as we speak. One of many things DME has going for themselves. Davis in good hands as the free throw is up and in by her replacement. Final four minutes of the first half. It's been all DME to start. They jumped out to a 9-0 lead and haven't looked back since. Now up by 25. And guess what? An offensive rebound on a missed free throw again. Got to be driving Coach Panaggio absolutely crazy over there. I know how frustrating it can be when, uh, when you can't corral those free throw rebounds. So now this time it's Sampson at the line. 
And she misses the first. Well, there's a good chance she could miss the second here, Luke. So if I'm DME, I'm like really thinking about my responsibilities here. Second try, no good, and DME gets the rebound this time with McMillan. So they're finally able to clear it. McMillan into the front court with the 24-point lead for DME. Three-pointer for Duckett was short. Rebound goes out of bounds, and it was last touched by DME and Canton. Aiden jogging into the front court where McMillan is waiting. Fires it over to Williams. One of two captains on this team, Williams, with the kick out to Smalls. Williams gets it back. Right back to Smalls, another deep three, and a high arcing shot that goes in this time. Well, uh, Luke, that may have been the same distance as that air ball she shot. That was a bomb. This time she got a little bit more behind it for the three-pointer. And the Lions are within 21. Smalls averaging double digits for the second straight year. He's a varsity player since eighth grade. Here's Robach. The deep two was no good. Hayden on McMillan and a jump ball as McMillan ties up the 5-5 sophomore on the drive. Possession arrow will keep it here at the Lions, though. Potter's House is trying to uh, get back in the game with a trapping defense right now. Smalls off the screen, tries her luck again, and she buries another triple. That was a tough shot, Luke. That was off the dribble. That's a three off the dribble from NBA range. So after her air ball three, she has knocked down two nice ones from NBA range has mentioned. And DME responds with a full timeout with 2.26 to go in the first half. The lead trimmed to 18, 39-21, and Potter's House, after a very slow start on the offensive end, has found a little bit of a rhythm here of late to try to climb back in this one. Yeah, uh, mostly on the backs of uh, those two back-to-back -back threes uh, by uh, the young lady uh, that escapes my name right, my, my memory right now. Number 41, I believe. Victoria Smalls. Uh, oh, number four, okay. Number four. Yeah, two big buckets. But they are starting to trap and put a little pressure on DME. DME has got to be patient, just keep moving the basketball and wait for the best opportunity. Not the first opportunity. DME with their lead, cut down to 18. And after they're up by 26 earlier this half. For DME, fouls with 9 of 12 in this game being called against them. And then the lack of rebounding once they send the Lions to the free throw line. Those have been two big issues on one end of the floor for DME. Mm -hmm. And offensively has slowed down a little bit. While wow, the Lions try to play catch up. Well, this is an important possession. They, there's 226 in the half. Mm -hmm. uh, the lead's been cut to about, what, 18? Mm -hmm. So uh, DME's got to come out and uh, be patient and get a, maybe get something inside. Out of a timeout. Let's see what DME drew up. They come with almost a triple team on Duckett. McMillan a give and go to with Cantone. Now the kick out to Robach. Her mid-range jumper no good off the iron, but it'll stay here with DME. Good, you know, good ball movement. I think maybe Marissa rushed that shot just a little bit. And a foul called before DME could even inbound. Just their fourth, so nowhere close to the bonus. Dampier was holding Robach. Yeah, still two more fouls to give for the Lions with 2.10 to go in the half. Inbounds to McMillan, deflected, stolen by Smalls, but she was out of bounds on the sideline. DME's lucky they're not responding well on these uh, baseline out-of-bounds plays. Every one, they're flirting with a five-second call. Shot clock never reset. Smalls ruled to not have possession. Almost came away with another steal there and said, duck it with the pull up and she sticks it. She's got the great footwork and pull up jump shot. Just what the doctor ordered. 
Smalls off a of screen, tries another three, and knocks down her third of the half. Well, that one she moved to her left off of a pick, a high screen, and, and, and buried it. So it's a 17 point lead for DME in the final 90 seconds. Roll back out to Duckett. Pull up jumper from the foul line, rims out. Williams up ahead. And a foul called on the jumper from the baseline for Sampson that will send her to the line. Momentum has changed, Luke, a little bit here. And even though it's still a 17-point game, you can feel that the confidence that DME had early has slipped away a little bit. This, too, has their lead that was at one point up around 26. For that free throw, it trims it to 16. As Moore will check out after picking up the foul, Rayner takes her spot with 112 to go in the half. Paragio, Coach Paragio may be protecting Kiki uh, so that she can play uh, without fouls. Well, maybe with the help of the horn, another offensive rebound for the Lions off a missed free throw, and it turns into a three-point possession. Yeah, that's been a problem. Just a 14-point game now, final minute, first half. McMillan double team dribbles out of it. Row back with the open three, air ball, but Cantone there for the rebound and the putback. Well, Marissa hasn't got it going with a jumper today, and um, they're... Uh, Catone uh, really bailed her out. Deep three for Smalls off the mark. She finally cooled. About a two-second differential between clocks here. DME can just about hold it out for one final shot. They lead by 16. Duckett has it stolen away at the foul line by Smalls. And Duckett coming from behind, pokes it free and out of bounds. Smalls is a pretty darn good player. A junior on uh, the varsity team for her fourth straight season here with Potter's House. One of the leading scorers. Final 10 seconds. Here's Smalls for three. No good. Duck it with the rebound. Demi needs to move quickly. Robach with three. Pull up jumper. Good. Nice way to end the half, Luke. Uh, Marissa finally gets a jumper to fall for her. So after a slow start shooting, she gets the final points of the first half, beating the horn in time. And at the midway point, it's DME leading now by 18, up 45-27. After a very quick start, they scored the first nine points of the game, built the lead up close to 30. And finishing the half maybe stronger was the Lions cutting the deficit to uh, 16 before DME got that final bucket. And here at the break, now lead 45-27, midway through up by 18. So DME with the 18-point lead at the half, looking for their 13th win of the year. And here at the break, we'll hear from the head coach momentarily here from the DME side, up by 18 as we send it over to Lauren courtside with the coach. Mikey, you guys started with a 9-0 to zero lead. Earlier in the game, we talked about taking care of the ball and rebounding defensively was the key to win to this game. What's the strategy like of what you guys have been doing so far? Um, we started off good, but, you know, we, we got complacent. They hit some shots, didn't match up. Um, offensive rebounding on free throws are killing us, foul trouble. Um, so we got, we got a long way to go to, to, to hold them off. Talk about the energy you guys have on the floor. It started to deflate a little bit. What are you guys going to do to get that going in the second half? Um, I thought we moved the ball well, and we got stops early on as they kind of got in a rhythm offensively and kind of got second chance points, and we kind of got away from what we were doing. Um, they got back in the game, and we finished on a pretty good note, but um, they're, they're in the game, and uh, I thought we had them on the ropes, and we kind of let them off. All right, good luck the rest of the game. All right, back to you, Luke. Thank you very much, as that's head coach Michael Panaggio of DME in his first year with the team, and they have the lead here at the half of 45-27 against Potter's House midway through. 
here on their home floor in Daytona Beach. We'll take a break for halftime, at least I will, to save my voice a little bit. Second half coming up in eight minutes, and we'll be rejoined by Coach Dan Panaggio and myself here to finish up the final 20 minutes from Daytona. DME leading Potter's House 45-27 at the break. We'll be back with the second half in less than eight minutes.
Well, we get set for the second half from the DME Sports Academy here in Daytona Beach, Florida, with DME leading Potter's House Christian at the break, 45-27. Potter's House out of Jacksonville enters tonight 13-9 on the year, 2-2 two two in conference play. DME, on the other hand, 12-10 on the year prior to tonight, 3-1 in the conference, 4-1 here at home. And up by 18, Luke Morrow alongside Coach Stan Panaggio. And, Coach, as we get ready for the final 18 minutes, down 18 with 18 minutes to play, what do the Lions have to do to come back in this one and pull out a W tonight? Well, I think the Lions uh, have got to continue with their defensive pressure. The double team has really disrupted the rhythm and the ball movement of uh, DME. And on the other side, DME with an 18-point lead, so maybe a little bit easier for them in the second half. But how can they come out of here victorious? Well, I think one thing is they can establish themselves early here in the second half of the dominance that they established in the uh, early in the start of the game. They scored the first nine points of the game and led by nearly 30 at one point before a late surge in that first half from the Lady Lions, cutting it to 16. And DME got the final points of the first half to make it this now 18-point lead. Demi with the ball first to start the second half. They're in the home whites, per usual. The Lady Lions in the colorful blacks. There's a pull-up jumper from the foul line. Good for Duckett. Coming off that down screen, um, and then a little up fake on the floor, and a great play by Lexi Duckett. She's off and rolling after a slow start shooting it today. DME back up by 20. Down the lane, the floater off the side of the rim for Sampson. And skying for the rebound is Happer. Duckett gets it back in the corner, firing up top to McMillan. Good ball movement from DME like we saw in the early going. Here's Duckett on a deep two off the back rim. Ball loose on the rebound, and finding it is Dampier. I don't think the shot clock ever reset. And so it's currently at 23 when the Lions should have more time than that. They add five seconds to the shot clock, and the Lady Lions will inbound at midcourt. Just a minute into the second half, DME leading by 20. And Moore pulling it out of the hands of Lane in the paint for the steal. Here's McMillan, pull-up jumper on the run, knocked down. Nice job by Mary McMillan, and the lead swelled back to 22 points here. Just, yeah, just like that. There's another steal for McMillan, leads the break. McMillan blowing past the defenders for the laying off the glass. I think a, a timeout is due for the Lady Lions right now. Coach Tony Bannister standing with hands on hips as he watches his team fall behind by 24. And almost a turnover. Last touch by Moore in the baseline that will keep it here at Potter's house. Luke, if I uh, remember correctly, 26 was the high water mark for DME. They're at 24 right now. Is that, is that accurate? You have that correct. So DME with a chance. They get the ball back without allowing Potter's House to score, we'll have a chance to match it. Off the inbounds, pull-up jumper from the corner is no good for Sampson. And DME clears it out. McMillan to Happer. Happer couldn't get it to fall, gets her own rebound. McMillan for three off the back iron. Rayner fighting hard for the rebounds inside, but she deflected that one out of bounds. 51-27, is that accurate? I believe so. Still looking for their first points of this half for the Lions. They're not going to come on that possession. Sampson got her shot blocked. Here's Happer striding to the hoop and scooping it in. DME starting the second half as they started the ball game, Luke, with uh, basically a shutout. Yeah, 9-0 run to start the game, now an 8-0 run to start the second half. Almost a carbon copy as the turnaround jumper was well off the mark from Williams, but able to put it back with Sampson. So that ends a 10-0 run dating back to the first half for DME. And the Lions have their first points of half number two. 
Well, a jumper from the foul line, good for Duckett once more. Have you seen a girl with a, with a pull-up jumper equivalent to or as good as uh, Lexi Duckett, Luke? It reminds me of Maya Moore. Mm -hmm. That's the type of talent level she displays at times on the floor. Here's McMillan sidestepping to the hoop, got it knocked free and stolen away by Hardison. Smalls with the three-pointer off the front rim. McMillan battling for the board. And they're going to stay out of bounds on the Lions. Lions are long and uh, really go after that those missed shots on the offensive glass. DME leading by 26. McMillan throws it away. Stolen by Hardison, who has a few thefts tonight. McMillan stealing it right back. Should be a fast break basket here. Three on one, McMillan finds Happer for the lay-in. Lady Lions are not uh, reacting well to mistakes and, and not getting back on defense. They have to take a timeout. Four minutes into the second half and DME opening up the second half on a 12-2 run to push their lead to 28 points. Their largest of the night up 57-29. And for the Lady Lions, certainly not how you want it to come out of the locker rooms and start the second half when you were already down 18 at the intermission. Yeah, you know, I hate to be overly critical, but um, um, uh, Coach Bannister, I, I, I really don't like the way he's handling his ball club here. And he has seen his team fall behind by nearly 30 tonight. He already got teed up earlier and since then has been less vocal at least in terms of volume. Yeah, and, uh, and, and really less involved in, mm -hmm. in, in trying to keep his team together. And that's what you got to do on the road. You got to withstand the, the, the home team runs. Try to just keep yourself in position where you might be able to uh, steal one at the end of a game. Potter's house away from home this year, six and seven. At home, they've won seven to nine games. There's a pull up three pointer that's off to the saddle of the rim by Hayden. And then the Lions hit the ball out of bounds. When you're down 28, a quick three like that uh, without any ball movement is not advisable. So not a good possession out of the timeout for Potter's House. I imagine that's not what they drew up. And DME with a chance to push its lead to 30. Or 31. Happer from beyond the yard couldn't get the bounce. Rayner with the rebound, McMillan with the turnover. And then the foul. Really like this DME team. I really like the, the, the girls. I think, uh, I think they're smart players. I think they're unselfish players. Doing a great job here tonight. Shows on the scoreboard with a 28-point lead. And now a steal from Rayner. Rayner double-teamed in the corner. Gets it away to McMillan. Three-on-three three fast break. Duckett with possession, spinning, pulling up. Couldn't hit it. Moore with the offensive rebound. The flip out. That's tracked down by Happer. Cross-court pass to Rayner. Couldn't be handled. Hayden with the steal, Hayden with the pass up ahead that got deflected out of bounds by Happer. She was trying to go to Davis. And Canton will check back in for DME. Confusion on the floor, it will stay with the Lady Lions. Both teams started to head back to the other end of the floor. Yeah, I think the, the, the kids thought it was out on, uh, on the Lady Lions. I could usually tell you something if the team that got the call Goes back on defense. Pull up jumper, no good for Sampson. Dampier with the offensive rebound and resetting is Davis. Foul called on the drive to the hoop. DME had nine fouls in the first half compared to three on the Lions, and that was one of the things that Coach Panaggio mentioned and the halftime interview that he'd like to see improve in the second half. And so far, DME with the first two fouls of this second half, though, stretched over nearly six minutes. Oh. 
Lane makes one of two. This time, DME able to get the rebound on the miss. Rayner pulled it down. Open three on the wing for Cantone off the back of the rim. Duckett with the rebound. Duckett in traffic, pulls it out. Fires up top to Cantone, who shuffles to Happer. Moore from the corner. Cut and hit it. Ball still loose. It's become a bit of a frenetic pace. Has a deep outlet up ahead to Sampson, but she couldn't finish the lay-in. Now a second try is no good with nobody around her for Mariah Lane. I think you, you sense the, uh, the absence of Mary McMillan here in the organization of the DME offense. Trying to fill the void is Duckett on this possession at least. Down at midcourt, guarded tightly by Smalls. Cantone with the drive and kick. Happer with the corner three. Happer hasn't found the range here in the second half from that left side of the floor. She has not been able to adjust to the other end of the court. She likes the left corner of this end where she made three threes and Rayner with a nice rejection out of bounds. That's the 28th block this year for the 6-1 Rayner. Just a young uh, lady who's uh, really coming around uh, in, in the game of basketball here. Now Rayner with the steal. Doing a little bit of everything defensively. Cantone down the center of the lane. Couldn't finish the lay-in. Here's a fast break for Mariah Lane, who finishes this time with the left hand. Helani's uh, struggled uh, this year finishing around the basket. Still no McMillan for DME, so Duckett runs the offense. Happer with the runner. No good off the window. Smalls had the rebound. Now a pull-up three from nearly midcourt off the back iron and could not be saved on the sideline by Davis. Luke, Luke, are you kidding me on that shot? <laughs> I mean, that girl has no conscience. She'll pull up from anywhere. We've seen her made a couple of deep threes tonight. Nothing like that. McMillan back in the game, and that should spell a little bit more uh, organization here for DME. 25-point lead for the home team with just more than 10 minutes to go, second half. Happer was the one that came out for McMillan. McMillan lobs to Duckett. Jumper was airballed and a late whistle for the foul. Just the first foul this half on Potter's House, only the fourth for the game, and Duckett will head to the line where she's already made a couple. You can sense the poise that Mary McMillan brings to the game here. Duckett gets the first. Duckett's uh, brother uh, listening from, from Italy, I believe, uh, Luke. Yeah, I thought maybe that contributed to the slow start for Duckett. Some nerves, as we'd like to give a shout-out to Zach Amadin over there in Italy, overseas, and watching live for the first time. His sister play after watching the archives of the live streams in the past. So nice to have Zach along. And he's seen his sister perform well per usual once again tonight after a slow start. Duckett has really gotten it going. She's helped DME build a 26-point lead here in the second half. Three-pointer for Smalls, too strong. And another fast break opportunity. Cantone gets it to fall in. Nice job by Mary McMillan to run that break. McMillan with the assist. She averages five a game, tops on the team, as you could imagine. And DME has a 28-point lead. Potter's House averages to only surrender 52 points per game on average. They've given up 60 already tonight as Smalls misses another deep three. And Smalls on the defensive end contesting the lay-in that was no good for a rollback, but there for the putback is McMillan. That's a good uh, illustration of why you got to bust your tail back defensively in transition, Luke. And it builds a 30-point lead now for DME as McMillan gets the hustle basket. 
And a block inside by Rayner, another one for her tonight, rejecting the shot from the taller Sam, uh, Gift Sampson. I like uh, Bree Rayner. I think she's going to be a, a really good ball player if she stays with it here. I believe that's her third block tonight. Also two for Keani Moore. Now a steal and the lay-in off the window for McMillan. Nice job, Barry McMillan, and good defense with a deflection there, DME. DME doubling up on the scoreboard. They lead 64-32 with just more than eight minutes to play. Much different score than these two teams experienced in the first matchup back in mid-December when DME only won by six. McMillan with the spin cycle. Got the shot blocked, but Cantone there for the loose ball. Another loose ball tracked down by Moore. Duckett. Back to Cantone. There's McMillan on the drive. Roback on the kick out, can't hit the three. And the rebound secured by Duckett. Moore with the deep two, knocks it down. And there she is again, Luke, Miss Steady. Kiki Moore. DME continues to add on to its largest margin of the night, now up 34. There's a block for Moore, and they're going to call a jump ball as coming back down with the basketball is Lane. That's at least two blocks. She may, that may be her third block. rainer has got at least a couple of blocks. Mm -hmm. DME does a good job of disrupting in the lane offense. By my unofficial count, I believe each with three blocks tonight. Mm -hmm. They looks both like, average a couple a game. Looks like they've gone to a 2-3 zone here, Luke. Small's missing the three off the inbounds play. And the putback good for Cameron Hayden. So that makes it a 32-point game with seven minutes left. Looks like both teams in a zone defense. McMillan to Rauback. Good ball movement from DME. Being patient. Shot clock down to five. More foul on the take. Beautiful job uh, for um, Tyla there, Hapner, uh, on the, uh, the right hand drive and then drew the defense and then found uh, Kiki Moore for the easy layup and foul. So Moore at the line for two, a 69% free throw shooter as a junior this year. And she makes the first. She got to the free throw line more than any other player for DME when these two teams met almost two months ago. She made three of six tries in that game from the line. Almost had a double-double. It's one point and one rebound away. Finishing with nine points, nine rebounds against Potter's House in a closer game back in December. Here she knocks down a pair of free throws. 34-point lead for DME. And another air ball onto the hands of Smalls. Well, Miss Smalls may be a heck of a, you know, a long-range shooter, but uh, she's taken some ill-advised ones. And I think, you know, the old adage, you can shoot them into the game or you can shoot them out of the game. Today, I think she's shooting them out of the game right now. Not much of a cutoff for Smalls. She'll shoot it from anywhere. There's Happer trying her luck from the corner again. That's an air ball, but stays with DME. And three in the key called on DME for the turnover. I'm not so sure about that one, Luke. I don't blame you. Final six minutes, 34-point lead for DME, up 68-34. Smalls reluctantly passes the ball there off of the dribble. And Hayden drew a foul using the dribble to try to get to the rim. Three fouls on DME, only five fouls in total is half. Hayden inbounds inside to Hardison. The pass out, 
Couldn't be handled by Lane, who gave up on the play, and it was stolen away by DME. McMillan trying to go to Roback. Knocked out of bounds by Hardison. It literally knocked out of bounds. Ball and, uh, and Lady. Luke. Well, at least the Lions are not going down without a fight. There's a travel on the baseline for McMillan, who bobbled the ball a bit. McMillan's had a, a great floor game tonight, I think. Could certainly see the difference when she wasn't in there earlier this half for DME on the offensive end. And the ball got knocked out of bounds by Happer, trying to rip it free from Cameron Hayden on the rebound. Do you get the feeling that uh, everybody, including the coach over there, is, uh, is given up for the Lady Lions from Potter House? Yeah, it's felt that way for a little bit now for the Lions, especially from the bench. Really no enthusiasm tonight for the Lady Lions and what has been a tough performance for them. There's a jump ball once more, and this will give the basketball over to DME. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things uh, for young coaches, I think, is to, is to uh, stay with your team, especially when the going gets tough. Uh, keep coaching them, keep in contact with them, this is, a, you know, supposed to be a learning environment, and mm -hmm. uh, giving up should not be an option for a coach. There's a three for Kiani Moore. She hits it. She's got it going tonight. What a great game she's playing. Third three of the year for the 5'10 forward. DME leading 71-34, pouring it on. Bank shot too strong for Lane. There's a three from the corner that's... Off the back iron by Smalls. Smalls, she'll try it again. No good once more. And McMillan tracking down the rebound. Three on one fast break. Happer with the lay-in. Textbook fast break, Mary McMillan. She's got to be approaching, uh, you know, the double digits in assist tonight, Luke. I, I would think so. McMillan with the ball in her hands once more. Finds Happer. Happer... Trying to get fancy with the pass. Couldn't get it over to Rayner. Instead, threw it away. So we're at 39-point deficit here now for the Potter House Lady Lions. And Potter's House only with seven points this half in 14 minutes. DME led at the break 45-27. Since then, a 28-7 second-half performance. Smalls can't cut into it with the three. Shooting percentage hasn't been all that good for her tonight. And a foul on the rebound against DME. Throw back with the personal. That's only four fouls on DME, so Potter's House will inbound. The Lions in danger of suffering their eighth loss in their last 13 games after an 8 and 2 start this year. Smalls misses another three. Happer may have blocked that shot from behind. Rayner with a foul called as she tried for a block of her own. So free throws for Sampson. And she misses the first. Nothing going right for the Lady Lions here in um, Daytona Beach, Florida tonight. They'll be ready to head back to Jacksonville in 349. Now, I've seen her shoot two shots. Is there a reason she's getting a third uh, attempt? It must have been a violation of some sort, I would imagine. I did not see any sort of indication. Well, she's got a shot at the hat trick here, Luke. Third time is the charm. So Samson salvages the final. Final 3.42 to go here from this one with DME more than doubling up. Potter's house on the scoreboard. Don't miss the second half of our doubleheader tonight. On the men's side of things, as a foul was called, and that drive Duckett got popped in the face. 
Yeah, Alexi did a great job of penetrating off of that uh, high screen and roll and then uh, finding Marissa rule back in the left corner. Shortly after the conclusion of this one, we'll have uh, the men's side of things between DME and Potter's House at the high school level streamed right here however you're watching this one, whether it be the DME Sports Academy page on YouTube. You could also get the link on Facebook or the DME Academy website, though you would already know that. Inbounds pass stolen away by Davis. Davis on the fast break to Sampson, and she took a lot of steps before yeah. that shot. <laughs> a lot is a good description. Maybe too many to count. <laughs> Must have forgot what sport she was playing. If I had one criticism, I actually have a couple, but if I had a criticism of DME tonight, it would be they have done a poor job on their baseline out-of-bounds play. Several of them have been stolen or deflected. Had to use a timeout in the first half to save a five-second violation. Always things you can clean up, even if you're on the uh, winning side of a 30-point game. Or in this case, almost 40 points now at this point. Final three minutes and change. DME leading 73-35. A nice high-low game, but Rayner couldn't finish the first try, nor the second. And Smalls has the rebound for the Lions. Smalls fakes the three this time. Jumper from the elbow. She draws the foul on Rayner. That's the first time I saw her aggressively get into the middle of the defense. And a lead to free throws for the 5'7 junior, Victoria Smalls. Top leading scorer amongst returnees from a year ago for Potter's House. Now they're going to say it's on the floor. So there will be an inbounds and set for the Lions on the final foul to give for DME. Smalls gets the inbounds, quickly gets rid of it. Back to Smalls. Here's Williams. Lost it into the hands of Smalls. And the deep three short. Williams couldn't finish either. Moore with the rebound for DME. Duck gets pass deflected and stolen at midcourt there by Davis. Davis with the sidestep to the hoop. Couldn't complete the runner. Rebound off somebody's foot. Out of bounds off of Davis. If I'm DME right now, I want to spread the floor out, move the basketball. There's a lot of double teaming and chasing. Just, just find the open man, uh, and uh, I think they'll get a much better shot opportunity. McMillan back in the game to maybe try to do that offensively for DME. It's Rollbach. They did not really do what I suggested. McMillan. Inside for Rayner, who got bumped and fouled on the shot. Well, I tell you what, Mary McMillan has really shown an ability to get inside the defense and find the open player and then deliver a on-the-money pass. This time resulting in free throws for Rayner. And she misses the first try. And my advice to this young lady is don't get frustrated. 51% free throw shooter, sticks to her average. Final two minutes, DME leading 74-35. These two teams played about seven weeks ago. It was a six-point game. Now in the second meeting, it's been all DME tonight as the foul line jumper was no good for Lane. There's Duckett. Pull-up jumper from the free throw line is good. She may have been fouled on that jump shot too, Luke. Yeah, I think so. Final 90 seconds. DME leading by 41. Largest lead of the night. There's a three-pointer for Davis, a freshman. Well, badly needed basket. DME doubling up on the scoreboard against Potter's House in a game that the home team has never trailed in. They led 9-0 by the time the Lions finally got on the board, and they have led ever since. Final minute. 
McMillan on the pull up. Couldn't connect. Now Rayner taps the rebound out of bounds. Fifty-four seconds remain. And a foul called with forty-seven seconds. Fans starting to file out of the uh, DME Sports Arena. Forty-seven seconds left. Uh, but we got, hey, Luke, we got another great one coming up right after this one. Absolutely. On the men's side of things, Potter's House against DME. Streamed right here, wherever you're watching this one. And that game will start not too long after the completion of this one. Well, another offensive rebound off a missed free throw for Potter's House. That's really been the only thing going for them tonight. And it leads to a turnover anyways. Four-second differential between the two clocks. DME can't quite hold it out the rest of the way. McMillan may just take a shot clock violation or wait as long as she can. And then chuck one up. From Victoria Small's range. Final 10 seconds, DME with the 38-point lead. Shot clock will expire. McMillan will take the turnover. And Potter's House will have four seconds to work with. Well, it'll be interesting to see how they finish the game here after the final buzzer. That's not certainly how you want to finish heading into the final buzzer. As Williams wasn't ready for the inbounds, Potter's House lets the clock expire, and DME... Victorious in a large way tonight, doubling up on the scoreboard against Potter's House, finishing it 76 to 38 to improve to 13 and 10 on the year, five and one at home, while Potter's House falls to 13 and 10. Same record as DME, having lost both games on this uh, season matchup between these two. And for DME, they hold Potter's House only 38 points. They win by 38 points. They never trail in the game, just really dominance from the opening tip. It was, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think you, you know, I just think it was great play out of the blocks, and it was, it's almost like uh, getting hit with that haymaker in the first round. Sometimes it's really hard to recover. So I credit DME with uh, some great ball movement, some really good team basketball early going. So they pull out the 76-38 victory here in the first half of tonight's doubleheader from Daytona Beach. And the men will get ready to warm up and, Tip off and get going here on the live stream from the DME Sports Academy as DME wins the first half. They take it 76 to 38. And momentarily we'll hear from the player of the game from the DME side after the big win tonight. Beating Potter's House for the second time in as many matchups this year. Improving to 13 and 10 does DME. And now standing by, let's send it over to Lauren with tonight's player of the game. Kiki, mm -hmm. great performance tonight. Let's talk about the defensive end. Four blocks. You finished with 18 points. Tell me the mindset you had coming into this game. I came in the game. Okay, sorry. I came in the game ready to play today. It was a conference game, so we had to win. Now we're on to play West Oak, so I'm just ready to roll out. So, yeah. Talking about the conference game, now tied for first. You guys was won by seven points the last time you played this team. Now. A 39-point lead. Tell me the statement you guys came out and proved today. We we're just ready to come out and play. We've been practicing extra hard. We've been going over drills. We just came in with a ready mindset to beat them. We can't, no time to lose. <laughs> All right, great job today. Thank you. Back to you, Luke. Thank you very much, Lauren. As Keani Moore is the uh, player of the game for DME in the victory tonight, winning 76-38 against Potter's House. After a six-point win for DME against Potter's House in December, they blow them out tonight by 38 to move, as you heard, to first place in the conference, improving to 13-10, and 10, while Potter's House now will leave, head back to Jacksonville with the same record. Well, we're about 16 minutes away from the second half of our doubleheader, but the men's side getting underway between DME and Potter's House here at the high school level from Daytona Beach. For my broadcast partner, Coach 
Dan Panaggio, our fantastic crew. As always, I'm Luke Morrow thanking you for joining us in the first half of tonight's doubleheader. Check back in about 15 minutes for tip-off between the men. DME and Potter's House coming up momentarily from the DME Sports Academy here in Daytona Beach. <laughs>